Hey, Billy, you there? Hello, my lovely internet friends. Welcome or welcome back to my vlog channel. Today, I am back with another book rec video, but this time it's Brat Edition. I think I, like many of us, have kind of become overtaken with Charlie's new album, Brat, as well as the entire Brat summer aesthetic that has kind of gone viral online. And I'm a big book girly, so naturally, I wanna combine my favorite album of the summer with my other favorite thing, which is books. Today, I have seven books that I'm gonna talk about. Half of them are direct recommendations, books that I have read and loved that I really think encompass some of the themes of Brat, such as girlhood, partying, tackiness, pop music, fashion, the female gaze, etc. And then the other half are books that I think deal with some of those themes that are on my TBR that I am excited to read this summer. I know summer's almost over, but but we're just gearing up for Brat Fall. Don't you worry, the remix album is coming. So without further ado, let's talk about some Brat Summer book recs. Book rec number one is The Female of the Species by Mindy McGinnis. Not only does this cover really kind of give Brat in and of itself, but this book talks about female rage and revenge in a way that I love and adore. I have recommended this book before on my channel, so I'm sorry if you've already read this, but if you haven't, you need to pick this up. This is a highly underrated young adult mystery thriller. It has a little bit of a romance subplot, and it's just such a good brat summer read. Alex Craft knows how to kill someone, and she doesn't feel bad about it. Three years ago, when her older sister Anna was murdered and the killer walked free, Alex uncaged the language that she knows best, the language of violence. While her own crime goes unpunished, Alex knows she can't be trusted amongst other people. Not with Jack, the star athlete who wants to really know her, but still feels guilty over the role that he played the night that Anna's body was discovered. Not with PK, the preacher's kid with a defiant streak who befriends Alex while they volunteer at an animal shelter. As their senior year unfolds, Alex's darker nature breaks out, setting these three teens on a collision course that will change their lives forever. Edgar award-winning author Mindy McGinnis artfully crafts three alternating perspectives into a dark, riveting exploration of what it means to be the female of the species. This book is fantastic. This book touches on female friendships, falling in love, revenge, sexual assault. The themes do get kind of dark and graphic, so definitely be wary going in, but it is a perfect brat summer read that you need to pick up. Next is a bit of a classic that I annihilated in one sitting, and I think it is, again, perfect for brat summer. It is quick and it is easy, but it is nihilism incarnate, and it is the lovely Play It As It Lays by Joan Didion. Not only is this cover one of my favorite book covers ever to exist, this book is fantastic. A ruthless discussion of American life in the late 1960s, Joan Didion's Play It As It Lays captures the mood of an entire generation, plumbing the emptiness and NUI of a seemingly bankrupt society in spare sentences that scour and disturb. Set in the moral limbos of Hollywood, Las Vegas, and the Mojave Desert, Play It As It Lays remains, more than 40 years after its original publication, a profoundly unsettling novel, riveting in its exploration of a woman and a society in crisis, stunning in the still star startling intensity of its prose. I read this in the bathtub with a bottle of wine and it really touched me. It follows our main character, Maria, who is a woman, a mother, and a famous Hollywood actress who marries an abusive director in Hollywood. And it just kind of follows her life as a starlet and her kind of dealing with not wanting to be alive. It's very dark, it's very direct, and it's blunt, but it is a story that has stuck with me ever since I read it and I highly recommend. This one's for all my mean girls. I guess speaking of mean girls, the next book that I'm gonna recommend is another YA. I picked this up a few years back, so I probably remember the ins and outs of this one the least. I read this when I was in college on a flight, and again, I just devoured it in one plane ride because it was so good. This is Bad Girls with Perfect Faces by Lynn Weingarten, another YA mystery kind of thriller. It was so compulsive and it follows our female main character kind of doing some questionable things. If you like morally gray female books, then I guess that's why you clicked on this video, I would hope. When Sasha's best friend Xavier gets back together with his cheating ex named Ivy, Sasha knows she needs to protect him. So she poses as a guy online to lure Ivy away. But Sasha's plan goes sickeningly wrong, and soon she learns to be careful of who you pretend to be, or you might be surprised of who you become. Told in multiple points of view, Bad Girls with Perfect Faces is sexy and twisted with shocks at every turn. This shit is messy, but it was fun and I had a great time reading it. I feel like the lipstick with the flies on the cover, 
so brat. The next book that I have to recommend is actually one of my current reads. I'm about 100 pages into this and I am loving it. It is Isabel Banta's debut novel, Honey, and it follows the rise of a pop star named Amber Young as she rises to fame in the late 90s, early 2000s. Think very much like Britney, Christina Aguilera, and obviously because it centers around a pop star, I feel like it is the perfect read to pick up this brat summer. This book reminds me of tracks such as Sympathy is a Knife, I Might Say Something Stupid. I feel like it just really deals with the pressures of being a female pop star in the public eye and how much pressure is put on them, not only on their mental and their physical well-being, but just on their bodies and on their image and their lives. And the writing is fantastic. I've already tabbed so many, so many lines, and I've just started the book. It's 1997, and Amber Young has received a life-changing call. It's a chance thousands of girls would die for, the opportunity to join the girl group Cloud9 in Los Angeles and escape her small town. She quickly finds herself in the orbits of fellow rising stars Gwen Morris, a driven singer-dancer, and Wes Kingston, a member of the biggest boy band in the world, ETA. As Amber embarks on a solo career, her rich interior life is frequently reduced, and she finds herself surrounded by people who claim to love her, but wish only to exploit her. Driven by a desire for recognition and success, for love and sex, for agency and connection, Amber comes of age at a time when the kaleidoscope of public opinion can distort everything and one mistake can shatter a career. Isabel Banta's debut novel, Honey, redefines the narratives of some of the most famous pop icons of the 90s and 2000s. It reimagines the superstars we idolized and hated, over-sexualized and underestimated, and gives them the fresh, multifaceted story they deserve. Not only does Charlie reference Britney's work in Brat, as well as her other albums, such as like with 1999, I feel like this book is so Britney coded, especially with like dating the famous boy band, very Justin Timberlake. And I really feel like this is a book that Charlie would read. I feel like she would pick this up and you should too. I am, and I'm loving it. Okay, the next three books are books that are on my summer TBR. So I don't know as much about them, but I really feel like they fit the brat vibes. And so I really, really, really am hoping to pick them up in the next few weeks. First is top of the list, I would say. It is Tacky, Love Letters to the Worst Culture We Have to Offer by Rax King. I mean, just look at this, look at this book. Cover, back cover, and tell me that this is just not brat in a nutshell. And a lot of those early 2000s trends that were just based on having no taste and kind of how having no taste is essentially having all the taste, according to Charlie. An irreverent and charming debut about the joys of low culture and bad taste, exploring coming of age in the era of Hot Topic, Creed, and Frosted Lip Gloss. Tacky is about the power of pop culture, like any art, to imprint itself on our lives and shape our experiences, no matter one's commitment to good taste. These 14 essays are a nostalgia-soaked antidote to irony putting the aesthetics that we hate to love into a kinder and sharper perspective. Each essay revolves around a different cultural artifact, providing thoughtful, even romantic meditations on desire, love, and the power of caring just a little too much. An essay about the gym tan laundry exuberance of Jersey Shore morphs into an excavation of grief over the death of her father. In You Wanna Be On Top, Rax writes about the friendship and early aughts of girlhood, and in another, Guy Fieri helps her heal from an abusive relationship. The result is a collection that captures a personal and generational experience of unrepentant joy with clarity, heartfelt honesty, and King's trademark humor. Putting Hot Topic, Jersey Shore, Creed, and Guy Fieri in one book, that's brat as fuck. Next is yet another essay collection, and I feel like this is the epitome of Girl So Confusing, enough so that I did manage to buy a signed copy without even reading the book. That's how much I just feel like I'm going to enjoy this book. It is girlhood, by Melissa Fabos. In her powerful new book, critically acclaimed author Melissa Fabos examines the narratives women are told about what it means to be female and what it takes to free oneself from them. When her body began to change at 11 years old, Fabos understood immediately that her meaning to other people had changed within it. By her teens, she defined herself based on these perceptions, and by the romantic relationships, she threw herself into headlong. Over time, Fabos increasingly questioned the stories that she had been told about herself and the habits and defenses she developed over years of trying to meet others' expectations. The values she and so many other women had learned in girlhood did not prioritize their personal safety, happiness, or freedom, and she set out to reframe those values and beliefs. Blending investigative reporting, memoir, and scholarship, Fabos charts how she and others, like her, have reimagined imagined relationships and made room for the anger, grief, power, and pleasure women have long been taught to deny. 
Written with Phobos's characteristic precision, lyricism, and insight, Girlhood is a philosophical treatise, an anthem for women, and a searing study of the transitions into and away from girlhood toward a chosen... Why am I crying? I can't talk about girlhood. It's... Does anyone else get emotional every time you hear Lord's version on the Girl So Confusing remix? Because I think, like, unironically, the lyric, you walk like a bitch when I was 10, someone said that, and it's just self-defense until you're building a weapon, actually makes me want to, like, sob my eyes out every time I hear it. Head too close to home, I think. Oof. Anyway, Girlhood is a philosophical treatise, an anthem for women, and a searing study of the transition into and away from girlhood towards a chosen self. And last, but certainly not least, we have a bit of an unhinged adult horror pick. This is said to be the American psycho for women. On the back, it says, serial killing is no longer a boys club. By day, Mayfly works at the happiest place in the world as every child's favorite ice princess. By the neon glow of the Sunset Strip, Maeve haunts the dive bars with a drink in one hand and a book in the other, imitating her misanthropic literary heroes. But when Gideon Green, her best friend's brother, moves to town, he awakens something dangerous within her, and the world she knows suddenly shifts beneath her feet. Untethered, Maeve ditches her discounted act and tries on a new persona, a bolder, bloodier one, inspired by the pages of American Psycho. Step aside Patrick Bateman, it's Maeve's turn with the knife. Maeve Fly is a provocative provocative and unforgettable debut that is both a blood-soaked love letter to LA and a gleeful send-up of iconic horror villains. Elsa from Disneyland being a serial killer? Yeah, sounds brat to me. I usually like to save my horrors for the fall, so I might save this one for brat time autumn, but we shall see. Either way, sounds like such a fun read. Those, my friends, are my seven brat summer book recs. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you found something that you can hopefully add to your TBR. Thank you so, so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and please remember to stream brat. I love you so much. Hopefully I'll see you in my next video. Bye! Are you ready?